say you are what you eat, so I don't eat chicken feet. But I love me some of Grandma's pickled beets. Well, cut it up, put it in the pan, throw it over your shoulder and see where it lands right here in the farmer's kitchen. Maters, taters, beans and corn, the cows in the barn and the sheep's been shorn, kids in the barnyard chasing Grandpa's chicken. Chicken, chicken. Spices, slices, cuts and dices, gonna slash your grocery prices right here in Farmer's Kitchen. Help you grow your garden good with recipes to suit your mood. Try some grub you've never tried before. Smash it with a wooden mallet, gonna educate your palate right here in Farmer's Kitchen. In town, Farmer's Country Kitchen. cook something good now. Hello and welcome to Tim Farmer's front porch. Nikki, you've had a haircut. I certainly have. <laughs> How do you like it? It's not Nikki, it's Ricky. It's Rick Hill. There's a yeah. reason he's here today. You know, I went out turkey hunting. Greenup County. Greenup County. You've been up on that mountain. Yeah, I've been on that mountain. That mountain produces. I almost died trying to follow you up it, but that's another story. But you story. got her done. I got her done. And you know what? We're going to have turkey today in the kitchen. Now you do not have to have a wild turkey to make these recipes. It's just turkey's turkey. Right. Now wild turkey is a little bit different. To me it tastes better. It's got a nutty yeah. mm -hmm. wild taste. It does, yeah. It's not It's not um, in any way gamey. That's Something. from all those acorns. Oh, you can't beat it. Yeah. Now recently Kenny Upchurch on Facebook says, hey man what do you do with those legs? Yeah they're pretty tough because they're a wild bird. They live on their legs. Yeah, they use their survival flying and running. Yeah. So, so yeah. you think about all the time. You know, a big old a big old barnyard turkey that they're fattening up. He waddles yeah. around. He's you they're know, soft. They're soft. Yeah. When you look at a turkey's leg, they're red, dark red. Even oh, if yeah. you you got to cook the fire out of them, yes. whether you pressure cook them, mm -hmm. we got a recipe for that. Because Kenny Upchurch says, "What can what can we do with mm -hmm. the legs?" Well, we'll show yeah. you. And Nikki's got a couple recipes. Just a fantastic meal coming up. But when we go out and turkey hunt, I've done a gazillion of them. Mm -hmm. You've been up in my sweet spot. Oh, yeah. It's a beautiful time of the year. You know, usually the red buds are blooming. Oh, and, and this. Yeah, neotropical birds are moving through, oh. coming back north. It's just a really neat time. The to be world out. is waking up. Yeah. And you think about our ancestors. You think about folks in this part of Kentucky who were coming through. And you think about the bounty when the chestnut oaks were dropping all those acorns everywhere. Oh, yeah. it was, the wildlife mm -hmm. had mm -hmm. to be at a maximum. Mm -hmm. But no regulation. So around the late 1800s, mm -hmm. we started losing. Oh, yeah. You know, people out clearing their field, and there goes, hey, go get the gun, there's a turkey. Oh, yeah. Boom! Anything that was good to eat, yeah. their numbers went down pretty quick. I was reading an article by Art Lander, and he's a, he's just a cool guy, an yes, outdoorsman, he and he knows his stuff. I like him and, a lot. So he did a two-part article and the first part, he talked about how they disappeared over time. They were all over the continent. And by the time late 1800s, 1900s rolled around, man, we didn't have hardly any turkeys. Right. Kentucky started noticing in the 30s, they started doing something about it. Mm -hmm. They had several kind of failed attempts. Right. They put them in mm -hmm. different places in the early 70s. They tried to bring them back. Mm -hmm. But until George Wright. George Wright. George Wright I just love to listen to him talk. <laughs> George Wright, come on, everybody. That strong right here. Georgian accent. He was Georgia. He was instrumental in what we have today in Kentucky. Bringing the wild turkey back. But first of all, this picture right here, it took me eight days to paint that. <laughs> well, you're faster than I am. <laughs> I tell you what, I couldn't draw I couldn't draw anything like that. Rick Hill, as you know, he's been on the show. He's a naturalist. He's a, but more than anything, he's an artist. But you can't be an artist without being a naturalist and have an eye for, for stuff like that. What what possesses you? What in the world? That's You captured opening morning. Yeah, that could be opening morning in uh, Greenup County. What inspired you? Other places what in inspired you to, to, I mean, the lighting. You know it's morning. The sun's yeah. coming up. There's a little fog back here. Do yeah. you have that in your mind's eye? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I love the, the play of light in, in a painting because it makes a mood where people can look at a painting and think, I've been there. I've seen that. The feeling in the morning or in the evening or whatever, even in the high noon, according to what kind of picture it is. But the backlight, which is shining through the, the wattles, it's it unbelievable. It lights and up and the, the little, snood and stuff. The little hairs. Yeah, and, and it shows a little bit of the detail that's on the back of their head. And backlit. Yeah. And then you got your 
Tom strutting back here. There's a little territorial thing going on. Who's going to get the hens? So that was the cover of the magazine, and this is a right. print. On average, how long would it take you to do something like this? I know, I know uh, everyone. Well, they vary so much, and I don't actually count. Usually take, you know, a couple of weeks to a month. It just depends on the subject. As we said, now, this one, I kind of like this one from several years ago. The painting was called Pitching Down. He's getting ready to go. Because you see some of them, they're pitching down into a nearby field. Now, yeah. I love your depictions. I always have. I've enjoyed your artwork over the years. But I think here before long, I would like to actually see some of the works that you've done. I know you've done carvings. and so. Would you bring some of your stuff out here and let folks sure. see? Sure. Sure. I'll give you a dollar. Two. Well, I got one more. Ah, I thought you might. I want to over indulge with turkeys here. But look at the natural now colors. Here's one that you in bring. a glowing early light. That's hard to get. That's hard to. Well, the iridescence is just hard to believe if you haven't had one in your hand or been close to one. It's you know unreal. what I mean. When you walk up to one after you've harvested one, that you go over to. They almost glow. It's just unbelievable. All the colors the no. greens, the golds, the blacks, the blues. I mean, it's just. And colors incredible. that don't. that you can't hardly describe. Right. Well, thank you so much for sharing, and well, uh, I'm going to see you here for a while. Right. I want you to bring okay. some of your stuff up. I want to share some All of your right. stuff because it's, it's unique. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll do it. All right. A fellow by the name of Kenny Upchurch, he asked a good question. Okay. What do you do with the turkey legs? They're really tough. Yeah. Really, really, really tough. Well, the way they run, how would they not be? They live yeah. on their legs. Yeah. So you can boil them for 82 hours. Okay, about 82 hours. <laughs> no, you can boil them five, six hours in mm -hmm. all seriousness. Just a low boil enough to keep the water moving. But hey, they really are tough. You can pressure cook them. Now, a lot of times, if I had, you know, if I'd saved them and frozen them, right. you can take four or five out and you can get enough meat off to make a small amount of barbecue and put oh, them in a crock that's pot. That's a good idea. And even then they cook a little bit longer and you can put just a little barbecue sauce. But you know, we're gonna do something today. I had this a long time ago. Skinny. Remember Skinny? I he remember he skinny. passed away. <laughs> he was such a great guy. He made a pate, and so did a buddy of mine, Billy Bob. Mm -hmm. This is our version. This is a pate. So the process begins with cooking your leg thoroughly. Even mm -hmm. though you've cooked it thoroughly, it's still gonna be tough. And you gotta right. get all that connective tissue off and so on and so forth. But here's what it looks like. Not too appetizing, right? That's boiled a long time. It's dark meat. Right. Not like a turkey leg. It's red. It's mm -hmm. almost like red when you get in there. Now here's a picture of me with my turkey. This turkey was a huge, a monster turkey. And this bird had to weigh 28 pounds, if not more. Now also, something you want to do when you take wild turkey is save its liver. Liver is like licorice. It's you right. love it or you hate right. it. Right. There's no middle ground. But I beg you, beg you to try this. Now, you don't have to have a wild turkey leg. You could do this with just chicken livers. Mm -hmm. You could do this with dark meat on any kind of animal. Here's where we're gonna get this started. We're gonna melt some butter, okay? Mm -hmm. We're gonna heat that butter up. Now, let me tell you something we'll do later, too. We're gonna clarify some butter, have some clarified butter. What's that mean? There's three layers to your butter when you're cooking it, when you heat it mm. up. What happens is the solids will come to the top. You know how you get a little foam yeah, and there'll be the some on the bottom? Of, yeah. What you want is in the middle. Okay. So we're not gonna get real fancy and, and use any cheesecloth or anything like that. You could to get really pretty right. clarified butter. But at the end of this, we're gonna actually seal the top of that. You know how when you get bronze wire, it's got that, mm -hmm. that seal that. around yeah. it? Yeah. We're gonna kinda seal it like this with this clarified butter. So you scrape off that top foam, if you're doing it the easy way, and then you take the middle layer, which is pretty and yellow, and you put that on the top of that this. That sounds good to me. So that's what clarified butter is. Now, we're gonna heat this up, heat our butter up. We're gonna, we're gonna chop our onions up with a little chopper, along with a couple cloves of garlic. Cook those down, Yum. saute those down. And here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna let you pick on that. All right. So Nikki's taking a pair of meat scissors. I love these scissors. They are wonderful. Thank you, Tracy. Yeah, Tracy got us. So she's chopping and chopping that, getting them the smaller size pieces. Now, as you can see, if I hold that up, that's got a red color to it. I mean, that's a deep, dark red. And it's almost got a liver smell. Mm -hmm. And again, it makes really good barbecue. But you really, really, really got to cook them down. Then we're going to put some sage, about a quarter teaspoon. Then we're going to take some oregano, about a quarter teaspoon. And we're going to take some thyme, quarter teaspoon, dried 
Then you can put a little marjoram in there if you'd like, just a tad of that. Once we start cooking that down, we're gonna come back with just a little bit of allspice, probably a third of a teaspoon of okay. allspice. A little bit of salt. I would say about a half a teaspoon of salt mm -hmm. and about a quarter teaspoon of pepper. Okay. Those flavors Yum. are just fantastic. Then, once that gets all settled in, we're gonna take our liver and put in there. So we cook our livers till they're done. Now you want them to have a little bit of red color, but they, get, they need to be done, because you okay. want your pet to yeah. have a little bit of a, of a pink color. Right after our meat cooks down, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of wild turkey yeah. to our wild turkey. Oh. I'll let you dump that in that plate. We're just gonna let this cool down a little bit. So we'll take our all our stuff from this pan, put it in the food processor along with the turkey meat, turkey leg meat, which a lot of people don't eat, but overall about a pound or less of meat and grind it up. Yummy. So then you take your little remkin, whatever kind of little dish you want. Mm -hmm. You're gonna put your pate in that. Try some grub that you've never tried before. You might be pleasantly surprised. You know, our, our, we change as we go. I remember some of the stuff that I thought was just horrendous when I was a kid, you like love, beets. Yeah. Who could eat one of those weird looking purple things? Why in the world would anybody touch? I think, I don't think they're meant to be eaten. I think they're meant to be like thrown away. Is that what you used to think? I used to think that until. Now when we love them. Take our clarified butter. We're just enough. Cover the top. Cover the top. Pop Yum. that in the fridge. <laughs> we got an appetizer. And a couple hours later, yum. I put it in the fridge. Let's pop that in the fridge. Look, Mrs. Farmer. That looks nice. Look at the butter on the top. <laughs> this is our appetizer. Right? It's like butter. I can just eat that with a spoon. Mmm. Wow. It reminds me of like liver pate we used to, that we bought. That is like something you would get mm. at a fancy restaurant That's good. in Austria. Taryn would like the butter here. She'd be eating that for us. That's amazing. You sure you don't want to try it, Kelly? Kelly said no. Kelly won't try it. Mmm. -hmm. Yum. That is absolutely <laughs> beyond wonderful. Yum. Now we've taken that meat which was a darker meat, mm -hmm. which is discarded by a lot of people. A lot of people just breast them out. That's good. Look at that. Is that not like something you get at a fancy restaurant? It is. I love it. It's delicious. Oh, my. Set that aside in a special place. Okay. We don't have to worry about Kelly eating this. I know. She won't steal it, will oh, she? Oh, <laughs> we're going to attack that later tonight. Now, there's certain stuff that Kelly likes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it disappears. That's right. This, I think, she'll carry to the house for us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could seriously eat everybody that. That's a beautiful that thing. That is wonderful. All right. Let's go on to the next thing. Now, some of the stuff we did a long time ago, some of the stuff we aired even before we went on KET. That's right. We tried to dig some of this stuff up, and some of them, the audio had changed or we couldn't right. use it. This is one that's special. Colonel Sanders, once he got big, everything was a secret. Mm -hmm. There was absolutely zero way to find out anything that's under lock and key. Right, all his recipes. But before Colonel Sanders became famous, this nice lady came and did this recipe on the show. I think the recipe was written on a napkin by Harlan Sanders yeah. and given to some of her family mm -hmm. on a napkin. Wrote they, this yeah. down. This is special. Yeah, this is good. <laughs> this is a great set. Now, again, we're going to show you just a little bit. We've got some of the video. Mm -hmm. But this is a Harlan Sanders handwritten recipe because somebody went to his restaurant right. before he made it big and said, oh, I really like that. Well, here, I'll give you the recipe. Yeah. While he was still giving out recipes. That's right. <laughs> so this is scalloped tomatoes. Yum. So you're going to preheat your oven, that's important, mm -hmm. to 350 degrees. Fry your bacon until it's crisp and set it aside. One small onion, chopped. You got your chopper. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to saute our onions until they get translucent. This is beautiful. Farmer. Okay, so we've taken our onions, putting them in the drippings. And I believe they are translucent enough. Look yummy. All right, here's sugar. We've got two tablespoons of sugar and two tablespoons of flour. Here's and some again, soap. this is straight from the kernel. That is so cool. A little salt, a little pepper, a lot of pepper. He used a lot Pepper's of black good. pepper in his recipes, you know what? Yes. And some people say, as we've talked about before, 
that the secret to his chicken was the tele cherry pepper. When you try his chicken, right. the first thing that hits you is the black pepper. It's delicious. It is wonderful. Add your tomatoes and stir until thickened. And as we stir these, we're gonna kind of break them up a little bit. Just think about bite-sized pieces. You'll need four slices of toast. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the toast. All right. Is that all right? These little scissors are amazing. Let me tell you what. There are times when you're not here mm -hmm. and I want a big steak and one arm man cutting steak <laughs> is a pain. I bet it is. Boom, Those are boom, amazing scissors. Boom, boom, boom. We can never lose these. So all you one arm folks out there, and there's a bunch of them because I mm -hmm. talk to them all the time. Those are amazing. Look right here. We love them. You want to cut your steak? <laughs> boom, boom. It's perfect. Boom, boom, perfect. Even a big thick steak. And we haven't sharpened it. We've had it for years. No. They're perfect. They're wonderful. Can you smell that? I yum. That's ridiculous. This is so good. That's ridiculous. After this, you just add the bacon and toast. Mix Here's it your up. bacon. This is four pieces of toast. Our oven is sufficiently heated to 350 degrees. And only 30 minutes. Look at that. Yum. Ooh, buddy. That is magic. Yes, it is. Magic, magic. Magic. Mm -hmm. And the original recipe from Harlan Sanders right there. I almost feel like we're breaking the wall. I know. It looks delicious already. All right, let's pop that in. I'm Lardo. And I'm Burley. And, and we're, we're the, the Moron, Moron Brothers. Brother. Got a frog in my throat. When we was kids in school, let out our cousin from the city. Used to come and spend the summer with us on the farm. I'll never forget the year he got into the poison ivy. We had no idea it caused him so much harm. Me and my brother told him he would grow if he eat a lot of green apples. That's how he come down with the back door trot. We was down on the creek of fishing. He grabbed his belly and dived in the weeds. That's where he found that poison ivy patch. Poison ivy. Now you know what it looks like. All summer he laid in the shade. Couldn't even ride his bike. That day on the creek when he cleaned himself, thought it was weeds and grass. That's how he got poison ivy on his face. He blamed the whole thing on us. We thought it was funny. He told on us, we both got a switching. It's worth getting in trouble for. We couldn't quit laughing to watch him scratch it in them places. He was a itching. Poison Ivy. Now he knows what it looks like. All summer he laid in the shade and he couldn't even ride his bike. That day on the creek when he cleaned himself, thought it was weeds and grass. So he got poison ivy on his face. Now the summer slowly passed by and our cousin was getting better. Our mama used a gallon of calamine. But he took a major setback. Me and my brother tried to cure him with a coal oil rag and a bottle of turpentine. Poison ivy. Now he knows what it looks like. All summer he laid in the shade. Couldn't even ride his bike. That day on the creek when he cleaned himself, thought it was weeds and grass. That's how he got poison ivy on his face. That's how he got poison ivy on his arms and legs and neck and back and ears and feet and face. Thank you, music lovers. All right, and a lot of people take this turkey and just completely just deep fry it. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with it, chicken fingers, whatever. You kind of made me very happy when you came up with this. Now, this is not every day. We don't eat like this every day. It's got a lot of butter. We got, we got a lot of butter tonight, but yeah. a lot of times we wouldn't fix all this stuff together. Right. But tonight we're going to. That's right. Because we worked hard today and we need, we need carbs. That's right. I'm starving. So tell us what you're going to do here, Mrs. Farmer. Right. Jan, she would do her chicken like this. So that's why I, I just thought that'd be great with turkey. You have this huge breast. We're not going to need all this because it's just me and you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut. Use part of it. We'll save some of it for next time. I'm just going to cut little pieces. Probably like that. We're just, and you, you don't have to be anything fancy. I'm almost doing them just like chicken strips here. All right, so we're not going to use this. We'll put these aside. But here's what we're going to use because that's for me and you. 
Are we gonna share it again? I've got an idea for that later. Do you? Soup. All right. Soup. All right. I'm gonna salt and pepper these. Okay. I like pepper. You like pepper? I love pepper. You know who else likes pepper? Who likes pepper? <gasps> the Pepper Bandit. Glenn, we haven't seen him for years because he's, right. he's been in jail on, on pepper-related yeah, charges. Yeah, he's got some issues with the pepper. Recently, he was spotted on the Austrian border. He had lederhosen on. He had one of those big horns like the Ricola man, except in the horn, pepper. Really? Yeah. He'd go around and rob people with his horn. They'd have to pour their pepper. Wow. They, they thought Into he was the Ricola horn. guy. He was wow. the pepper bandit. Yeah. He's still on. I mean, he's amazing. just out of control. That's amazing. Poor Glenn. He never will get over his pepper habit. <laughs> now, we need something to dip yeah, these butters. in. I'm going to set your butter aside because okay. it's ready to go. We need something to dip these in. Remember, like you said, shake yep. and bake. Well, we're making our own shake and bake. And I start off by, I just, I got like a bag of chips. A little bit. We'll be at about half a bag left. And like I said, she used to just save whatever at the end of the bag they had Fritos, Doritos. But I like Lay's potato chips. One of my favorite. You know what? You can't go wrong. You no. get butter and potato chips. But when this comes out of the oven, it doesn't look like much. It's just like it's a... Delicious. But the taste... It's like fried chicken. Oh, my. And I'm going to add about an equal part. I'm going to kind of guess here. Just a little bit. It's about equal part of fry. What would you say? That's probably enough. I think it's just that much. Yeah, we don't really measure this. And you don't have to either. No, you kind of do your own thing. However how much you might want more potato chips and flour. All right. That's, that's it? Ready. Yes. Then you shake and bake. We're going to shake and bake. I'm going to do them. you what. Is our butter ready? Yes. Start throwing them in. We're just going to brown them a little bit. We're not cooking them. We're just going to kind of brown them and get a, like, kind of get that coating on there a little bit. We had a lot of response to the, to the cowboy crockpot beans we did with them. Now those are going to Dutch oven too. We would have been outside today. We were outside all day mowing and doing farm stuff, but the rain is back. Yeah. I'm so tired of rain. I'm really tired of rain. Did I tell you? I'm yeah, I know. I'm now. tired of rain, too. Well, it's April showers bring May flowers, so. That's true. And speaking of, we just got back from vacation. We got some ideas. We're not going to tell you what they are. But next week's show, so oh. The food was amazing. My. All right. Does that look about right? Yep, it's almost ready. Just let that other side brown up, and we're going to throw it in the oven. So you're just going to pour that on top of it? Yes, we're going to put that in a pan here. All right. And we're going to cook it at 325 for about two and a half to three hours. Right. And it's going to crisp up. We're going to pour some of this on top. And it's almost going to look like it's fried, like mm -hmm. fried turkey, and it's going to taste amazing. So you kind of just sealed the meat a little bit. So you don't really want to brown Yeah, you don't, yeah, you don't want to do that because we're going to actually, it's going to, it's going to bake in the oven. That's what makes it tender on the inside and crispy on the outside. Mm. We'll just stack them in there. All right, I'm going to take some of this, uh, this coating that we have left here, this potato chip, and I'm going to just sprinkle it over the top because that's going to kind of crisp it up. And you go ahead and pull the butter on top of that. Pour the butter on top yeah, of that? pour all that mm -hmm. butter. All that good stuff. And we're gonna cover that with foil and stick it in the oven and you wait till you see what we get. Now, that is Southern Comfort Food. Yes, it is. Now that doesn't look like something you get at a, at a fancy restaurant. And we don't want this to look like a fancy restaurant. Please want this food. is Southern Comfort comfort food. Colonel Sanders recipe right here. Mm, that's pretty good. That's full hop. That's awesome. That it's just good. delicious. Your turkey. Mm. Those potato chips, it kind of changes the, the flavor. That's so delicious. When you did that on Kentucky Field years and years ago, people went crazy for that. And of course we got some Lima beans. beans and butter beans mixed up. Mmm, 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 mmm. That's good southern cooking right there. Mashed potatoes, all I did, they don't need gravy because there's sour cream in those. Those are rich and, Just rich and with beautiful. Mmm. You know what? Flavor. That Yum. was a fun show. It was fun to go get the turkey because in Tim Palmer's Country Kitchen, the things that we bring in, they're likely to have been raised by us. Right. Or caught. Mm -hmm. Or hunted. You know, a lot of times we can trade and barter for stuff right. like, like Mac at Elmwood Stock Farm. Oh, I love his vegetables. We trade, we trade dogs for vegetables. That's right. That's perfect. <laughs> tell you what, we are so happy to have you here in our kitchen with us today. But we're going to have to turn those cameras off because right. we're going to get crazy on this food. <laughs> and if you want to get crazy on some of our food, where would you go to find some recipes, Mrs. Farmer? I go to timfarmerscountrykitchen.com. You do not? Yes, I do. That's Tim where these recipes are. Yeah. Why are you there? If you want to be informed when a new recipe comes mm -hmm. up or a new segment, how-to, whatever, 
just hit subscribe. Boom. Right. And you'll be notified. Also, we want you to be our Facebook friend. We're reaching the 50,000 mark. Wow. I hope we can trace the 50,000th person, person. <laughs> so we can give them some kind of gift. You know what? We're going to eat this every bit I'm of ready. it. I'm ready. I'm starving. But next week, brand new show, some really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. But again, it's all about good times, good friends, good eats. Good eats. I'm we'll ready. see you next week at the brand new Tim Boomer's Country Kitchen. To order a cookbook, please call 502-319-0487 or email timfarmerck at gmail.com.